Josephine Baker was born Frida Josephine McDonald in St. Louis, Missouri on June 3, 1906. She was an entertainer and a civil rights activist. Her career was centered primarily in Europe. During her early career, she was amongst the most celebrated performers to headline the reviews of the Folies Belger in Paris. Her performances caused a sensation in Paris. Her costume, consisting of only a girdle of bananas, became her most iconic image and a symbol of the jazz age in the 1920s. She was celebrated by artists and intellectuals of the era, who variously dubbed her the Black Pearl, the Bronze Venus, and the Creole Goddess. She renounced her U.S. citizenship and became a French national after her marriage to French industrialist Jean Leon in 1935. Baker was the first African American to become a world famous entertainer and to star in a major motion picture, the 1934 Marc Allegret film Zuzu. By the time Baker was 13, she worked as a waitress at the Old Chauffeurs Club in St. Louis, Missouri. She also lived as a street child in the slums of St. Louis, sleeping in cardboard shelters, scavenging for food in garbage cans, trying to make a living with street corner dancing to support herself as well as her younger sister. It was at the old chauffeur's club where Josephine met Willie Wells and married him that same year. However, the marriage lasted less than a year. Following her divorce from Wells, she found work with a street performance group called the Jones Family Band. She would marry again two years later to William Baker. This marriage lasted four years, although she decided to keep his last name, she would marry four times. Baker's street corner dancing attracted attention, leading her to being recruited for the St. Louis Chorus Vaudeville Show at the age of 15. She headed to New York City during the Harlem Renaissance, performing at the Plantation Club and in the chorus line of the groundbreaking and hugely successful Broadway reviews, Shuffle Along with Adelaide Hall and the Chocolate Dandies. Baker performed as the last dancer on the end of the chorus line, where her act was to perform in a comic manner as if she were unable to remember the dance until the encore, at which point she would perform it not only correctly, but with additional complexity. Baker was billed at the time as the highest paid chorus girl in vaudeville. Baker was often faced with rejection due to her race. One day I realized I was living in a country where I was afraid to be black. It was only a country for white people, not black. So I left. I had been suffocating in the United States, said Baker. Baker sailed to Paris for a new venture and opened in La Revue Negar in October 2nd, 1925 at the age of 19. After a while, Baker was the most successful American entertainer working in France. Ernest Hemingway called her the most sensational woman anyone ever saw. In addition to being a stage sensation, Baker worked very closely with the NAACP. Her reputation as a crusader grew to such an extent that the NAACP declared Sunday, May 20th, 1951 as Josephine Baker Day. While many do not know this about Josephine Baker, she was the first official female speaker for the NAACP. In 1963, she spoke at the March on Washington alongside Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. After King's assassination, his widow Coretta Scott King approached Baker in the Netherlands to ask if she would continue her husband's legacy by taking over the enormous task as leader of the civil rights movement. After many agonizing days of considering the invitation, Baker regretfully declined, saying her children were too young to lose their mother. She adopted and raised 12 children. On April 8, 1975, Baker was back on stage starring in a retrospective review at the Bobino in Paris, celebrating her 50 years in show business. Demand for seating was such that fold-out chairs had to be added to accommodate spectators. The opening night audience included Sophia Loren, Mick Jagger, Diana Ross, and Liza Minnelli. 
Four days later, Baker was found lying peacefully in her bed, surrounded by newspaper clippings with glowing reviews of her sold-out stellar performance. She was briefly in a coma after suffering a cerebral hemorrhage. Twelve hours later, after being rushed to the hospital, Baker, at the age of 68, was pronounced dead. She had been inducted into the St. Louis Walk of Fame and on March 29, 1995, into the Hall of Famous Missouri. When Baker swung on stage in that fiercely swinging banana skirt in 1926, she brilliantly manipulated the white male imagination. Crossing her eyes, waving her arms, swaying her hips, poking out her backside, she clowned, seduced, and subverted stereotypes. By reclaiming her image, she advanced her career in ways unprecedented for a woman at the time, especially a woman of color. And though in later years her banana skirts would transform from rubber fruits to a powerful, aggressive spike version, the initial design remains revolutionary. Beyonce paid homage to Baker by wearing a banana skirt in her 2006 Fashion Rocks performance. At the 2014 CFDA Fashion Awards, Rihanna memorably wore a sheer Baker-inspired dress. Josephine Baker at one time was one of the richest, most powerful, influential women of color. Thank you for inspiring so many with your courageous and fearful persona. Your vivacious, exuberant personality on and off the stage has influenced millions. And tonight, we honor you for indisputably being one of the greatest entertainers that ever lived.